Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com. We're continuing our PowerShell series. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit more, I don't wanna say advanced, but a bit intermediate on this one. We've covered how to find out what commands are, how to use the commands, get information and help, and given a couple of uh, basic commands like installing printers. But we figured we might wanna go a little bit more in depth and say how do, in my script, instead of just saying run this, return this, within it I wanna say if something is true or not true, do this or, or something else. So basically flow control on on running the script, the, the results will change based on the res, uh, what you get back on your initial poll. All right, so this one we're gonna go over if statements is the first one we're gonna cover. Uh, and we're gonna go uh, comparison operators. And there's some that are, these are your basic ones. These are, I, I'm gonna say they're usually gonna go with numbers, not, not always, but I'd say most of the time. And this one say basically if the value is three, we want if the dollar sign value is, and we've got this, there's equal NE, which is not equal, uh, GT or GE, which is greater than or greater than or equal to, and then LT or LE, which is less than or less than or equal to. So it's just kind of ways to say, if this if this is a value that I can say is greater than or like, so let's say we're running uh, something that was grabbing CD, CPU utilization, and we want to say if it is greater than 50%, I don't know, kill some processes or, or do whatever you want with that one. That one you could just basically set the value of, instead of just statically setting the value, it's uh, we're running the command, grabbing that information, and then if the value is less than 50%, you're good. If not, it'll do something else. So in this case, <clears throat> this condition is uh, equal, so this one should not be true. We're going to run just that one. Oh, no, the value equals 3. 3 does equal 3. That is true. But if we change that to be greater than instead of equals... GT, that one we're going to come back, we're going to get, that's not true at all, or we're going to change the T and we're going to go greater than or equal to. This is just kind of give you a quick rundown of all three of those. It's just a quick way to say, based on the results, is, it, is the number greater than or equal to this one and, and move on from, from there. Uh, the next thing we're going to go over is like and not like. So get this copied in. All right, so this one, we're, instead of setting a number, we're setting a server is... And then apparently I gave it SLC exchange 01. And then we come in here, we have uh, like, and you can see here we have almost the same thing and we have an asterisk. So we're not worried about if Salt Lake, we want all server 19s that are exchange 01 in this case. And we're gonna write that one out and we should get the wildcard worked. Uh, <clears throat> this is basically a way to accept wildcards. You can have either a static string, which is fine, or you can, uh, asterisk is one or many, or a question mark equals a single. So if I came in here and did just a question mark, that's gonna come back with nothing. But if I did three question marks, we're gonna come back and get that one was, was successful because that is three single entries or, uh, yeah, a single, I don't know what do I think of, just si single lines, not lines. Sing single numbers or, or letters that match into this one. So you can put multiple question marks for multiple or if you don't know how many in this variable, an asterisk is going to give you uh, any number as a result, and it will, it will compare that one. So if you just did S19 asterisk, you'd get the same result as the first one we had. Because it's basically, as long as it starts with S19, anything after that, it doesn't matter. It's going to grab all of it. All right, the next part we're going to go is uh, it's going to be match or not match. And this one involves regex. Uh, this is one di diving in to regex in this video is... It's, it's its own own video. It's pretty complex. They have things to help you with regex queries. But if you are looking to do regex, and which is incredibly powerful, you do dash match, and you can uh, put that query right in there and have it work. So in this one, it's just a simple one. We're just matching. We don't know if we're in United States or Britain. So is gray with an A or an E? We don't want to account for it. We have a regex here of the group where A or E works, and it'll come back and say that color uh, some variation of the muted color exists. Apparently, I'm clever with my write outputs now. Uh, th that's a very simple regex, but you can get very complex. Uh, you could do, there, there's regex queries in there that if it matches an IP looking thing, so an octet or four different octets, you can get that specific. So as good as your regex skills are, uh, this is how valuable of your query can be and matches or not matches incredibly valuable for that one. All right, and the next we're going to go is uh, contains for the operator. Uh, this one is 
does what I'm looking for, is it contained within the, the uh, output? So if we come in here and run just the first line of numbers 1 through 10, I'm just going to print that one out real quick. You can see that's a variable with 1 through 10 in there as a quick one. If this is the case, like if you're grabbing a whole document or a CSV file and you just want to know, does it contain a certain word or group of words? This is where this comes in. In this case, we have numbers. Does it contain seven? And we will get a response back. The seven is in that one. Uh, so there's contains, not contains. And the opposite of this one is in. And I'm going to double check because I got this wrong last time. I get isn't in confused. Yeah, it's in. So in is the same as contains, only you're going to put your entry first. So if we came in here and removed all of this, and we've just got the, oh, I removed the wrong thing. We just got the, the number seven there. We're going to do dash in, and then we're going to do dollar sign number. So this is going to be the same result. It's just contains as if you have your variable to the left, in as if uh, the variable is to the right. Run that one, get the same results. <clears throat> all right, and the last one is we're going to go over is is or is not, and this is based on data type. So we're going to come in here. We've already built numbers. Copy this one in here. We already got the numbers variable, so we're not going to recreate that. But we want to know, is dollar send numbers an array? Let me run that one and come back. You have the correct type. So this one is, if you're pulling back data as, and you've decided to a variable, but you don't know exactly what it is, uh, you got, you know, your PS custom objects or your arrays or uh, int 32s. The, there's a whole bunch of different object types. Is will let you know, confirm that you have the right object type. Uh, this is one I haven't used a whole lot in my own code. It doesn't pop up a lot, but if I ever need to know data type, uh, that, that's definitely how you're going to get that one done. All right. <clears throat> and now that we have the, those are kind of all of your operators that you can have in there. We're going to go over, you can do multiple operators. I'm going to say I am 30 years old because I ran this a long time ago. <clears throat> so we're coming in here. Oh, we've got the wrong group there. Coming in here, if I'm 30 years old, it wants to know, we have multiple conditions basically. Is my age greater than 18 and is my age less than 34? Run that and you can see that uh, advertise, advertisers love me a lot because I am the ideal demographic. I don't even know if that's true. Demographics change. Uh, this is kind of, this is a, a very simple example, but if you need multiple conditions, you don't have to just run multiple if statements. You can have... Just you have the if with your parentheses and then with another set of parentheses, you want each condition you want. So is age greater than, age less than. If you have multiple, like if when the age is to say it was dollar sign person and it considers age, weight, height, you could do age greater than 18 and height over six foot two. That, that would work just fine as well. So you can put all the conditions you want. You can trim it down right there and just, uh, act on the results if it meets all of the everything that you're looking for. All right, uh, and now we're going to kind of get into, I guess, acting based on if files exist or not. So the first we're going to come in here, and I don't even know if this one exists or not. We'll find out together when we run it. So we're coming in here, and we're running the command called test path. So we're looking ctemp file.csv for, for a file, see if it exists. If it, it does not exist, so it's, uh, we're going to go open that up. See, temp. We have history, but that's no good. So we're just going to rename this one to file. All right, so now if we go through and rerun this one again, it's going to come back with file exists. So this is just basically, and I use a file in this example, but it could be anything, registry entry, uh, in anything that you're looking for, you want to make sure it exists. It, it's required for it to continue. Just throw in an, a test path, if test path, and it'll let you know if it exists and you can continue. If not, you can put a, a custom exit code like file.csv does not exist. Uh, you can do the same thing we'll show here with uh, looking for a process. First one is file. This one is, uh, is notepad running. Run that one. It's not running. Or if we don't want to... You know, this is one where we don't have to uh, exit off is on there. We're going to go in there. We're going to say, hey, if Notepad isn't running, start Notepad. And this is uh, if something has to be running or process needs to be starting. Like I did start process Notepad. If you know what process it is with all of these, I'm doing very basic examples. But if you need a process running, do if and then dash not. We want to do get process Notepad 
And if it's not running, it's going to start it. So in this case, we'll run that, and it opened up in a different monitor, but we'll pull that over here. Notepad is running, so if we go back and run the first one, we can see it's there. All right, and the last process, that one's probably less common. More often than not is if this process is running, I can't update or I can't do something. We're just going to do the opposite of that one. And what we're doing here is we are... This time we're, we're still doing the get process for Notepad, but we're assigning that to a variable. And that way, if it finds the process of Notepad, then we can take that variable, pipe that into stop process, and that will kill Notepad for us. That's another... So this is a whole lot of way just basically say, uh, you, to, just to get the, as close to ideal conditions as you can before you run your script. All right, and the last thing that we're going to cover, and uh, this one could be a lot on its own, but we're just going to go over a quick example of, we're going back to the test path. We're going to come back. If the file, the CSV exists, we're going to import that. If it doesn't, it's just going to say it's not going to exist and do exit. Actually, if I did 11D like I have, because I'm hilarious, that's going to error. we we'll just do exit 11. Do this one here. So on this one I have, so if it exists, it's going to grab all the content, and we can assign that to a variable B. It's going to grab all that content, put it in a variable. You can then do action on that variable. What we have here where write output the file doesn't exist, if it's something you just need it to exist, you could also just uh, create that file on the fly here. Just run that one here, and you can see. Now we get to find out what was in history together. Oh, apparently this was uh, for our process monitoring when we built the, the scanner. That's just a quick way. This is uh, to take your scripts to the next level. Instead of just going in and saying, do this very specific thing, you can go in there and say, try this. If you're getting these results, then continue on. Make it and, and do this. If not, let me know exactly what's missing, and you can start getting more proactive with your scripts and get uh, more in-depth with your results. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.